students often get very behind with writing up laboratory reports, particularly when they have experiments to write up each week. And I think the, the advice I would give students in that situation would be primarily before you leave the laboratory, make sure that you know exactly what you're going to have to do to write up that experiment. That will save you an immense amount of time outside the laboratory situation. And secondly, if you find it difficult to keep up with writing up laboratories, try to set aside a set time each week where that is the only task you will work on and try and keep to that routine. And that way, hopefully, you'll, you'll keep on top of things. Well, an abstract should summarise um, the issue that you've investigated, what you've done and what your conclusions are. So I think the best thing to do is to just jot down a few sentences for yourself what issue it was you were investigating, what you actually carried out and what findings you discovered. And then that, those sentences form the basis of your abstract. Your abstract shouldn't have too much experimental detail in it, so keep it fairly broad and general. And it should be no longer than a couple of hundred words. Who's planning for an experiment to report? A pl a planning should be crucial. So you should sketch out what the structure of your report before you start. And the easiest way to do that is to use headings and subheadings and then go back and flesh in those headings and subheadings with the relevant information. In writing up a practical report methodology is crucial. It explains to the reader exactly what you carried out. And it should be written in such detail or sufficient detail that the reader should be able to repeat that work and crucially obtain the same results as you did. So that's the level of detail that should go in. And should al always be written in the past tense. Um, tables should be used to summarise large amounts of complex data. They should always be labelled clearly so that it's obvious what information is being presented. Your discussion should discuss the results that you've obtained and what those results imply, what those results tell you. Um, and that's the section before your conclusion where you pull everything together with your final message. So the, so the results in the discussion are closely related. So the discussion discusses, discusses the results and the conclusion pulls out the message and, and presents it very clearly and succinctly. So your conclusion should be a, probably a shortest section. All scientific prose should be written in the third person passive, past tense, always. So no personal pronouns, except in very unusual circumstances.